Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, the difference in a pass rush and a push. And are the Red Raiders beginning to figure out an identity? We'll get into it next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Great to be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, always free and available on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. So thanks as always for making us your first listen. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Place a $5 bet and you're going to get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. So visit FanDuel.com. To get started with the only Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. Chris, great to be back with you. And today we've got some thoughts to consider from Red Raider head coach Joey McGuire. Of course, again, turning our attention to the Arizona Wildcats and a little Big 12 after dark action for the Red Raiders from Tucson coming up on Saturday night. But still considering some things that went down Saturday against the Bearcats of Cincinnati as Texas Tech Squeeze one out, 44-41, to 41, the final score. And today, I want to get to some thoughts from Coach McGuire on what they are attempting to establish and or achieve via the combination of offensive linemen that we saw on Saturday, a new combo that we've seen for the first time this season. Expecting that to continue, but was interested to hear him kind of describe what they thought they were getting with those five guys in those five spots specifically. So we'll get to that coming up in just a moment. Also want to get to him talking about finding an identity and figuring out who you are and beginning to wonder whether you like it or not, by this point in the season, have we found the identity of this Texas Tech football team? And I want to kick off our conversation with a thought from Coach McGuire. Sort of ends in a way that sums up everything in all aspects, but you'll hear him beginning to talk about some of the frustration defensively and some similar things, obviously, that we have mentioned beginning with the lack of a pass rush. Here's Coach McGuire. From the school of thought where I'm from and and raised is if you don't ever see a pass rush, as far as a pass rush move, you're not rushing the passer. So we got a lot of pushing. We got a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of pass rush is speed. And then if you're not getting there or the, depending on the set of the tackle or the guard, now you go to power. We've got a lot of just going to power. Well, it's really not. We're just pushing. I mean, there's multiple times that it, they're not rushing. Like, we're not taking practice to a game. It's, it's a, that's one of them. And then the other is the part of the coverage. But then the other is, like, I don't feel like we're very physical um, – with receivers whenever it comes to our linebackers we're not walling we're allowing um you know receivers uh you know to kind of run free to get to their spots it's happening at corner two we're in cover two we just open up we don't slide with a receiver and force him anywhere and so that allows a lot of open windows we also leave windows you know it i mean there i promise you there's you know TD's probably going to say he's frustrated. There's no person on earth more frustrated than the way we're playing defense right now. And, you know, we could go into a lot of – we could sit up here for two hours and talk about the things that, that we are not doing on defense that is extremely frustrating. And, and um, you know, I learned this a long time ago, but insanity is continuing to do the same thing over and over and expecting different results, you know. And, and uh, so hopefully – uh, we are going to be more physical with receivers this week, um, you know, and, and we're going to close windows and, and we got to practice that. I mean, it goes back to what we're going to do in practice. I mean, that's one thing that we've got to do. And we got to break some habits, some habits that um, we were able to do uh, maybe year one because we had a Tyree Wilson. Um, you know, uh, we had a, you know, the two linebackers uh, generated more sacks. Uh, year one than what we had the last two years. Uh, so th- that's one thing right now that we're c- continually digging into, you know, because uh, I think our offense is explosive. I think we're doing a good job. I think we're making some really timely stops on the defense side of the ball. But uh, if we're going to sit here and go 3-0 and in the Big 12, we got to play better defense on Saturday. I thought there was some fascinating stuff in there because the, the last points that he's making – I share the perspective in that 
It hadn't been all bad defensively. Obviously, you have not been the great wall of Lubbock or anything like that, but you have made some big plays. We've had some huge takeaways that have put you in good spots, and obviously we know what your offense has been capable of doing. And then the way that he kind of breaks down how he views a pass rush, uh, I thought was really interesting for a layman or just a fan to hear as well because sometimes I'm looking at it like, all right, on hut, kick the guy's ass in front of you. A lot more involved, I guess, <laughs> than just that, though, and some of those things standing out to him. Man, I thought that was a really interesting answer. In uh, in basketball, they uh, like when you're scouting a basketball team and you're figuring out what they do on offense. There's some guys that you may term them a glue guy, or may term them, a, but you don't have to like guard them. Like if we're going to help off of like a, their stud guy on offense. There's a guy out there that typically, okay, you can help off. Like you're, you're, yeah. if, if you're guarding him, you can help off of, and, and the term is clogger. You know, like <laughs> they're just kind of clogging it up theoretically. You know, they, they may be like the dirty work guy, get the rebound and the put back, and you're not calling stuff for him. And unfortunately, what you have right now with your defensive line, I think there's too much of that just kind of being a guy, you know, just kind of getting in the way and kind of just hand fighting and, and, and all those things instead of just you know, perfecting the craft enough to like get after somebody and beat somebody around the edge. And that's not always happening, but that's what I hear Joey kind of explaining that that's the first thing I thought of. That's kind of what I hear him saying is we just have too many guys that are just kind of taking up space or just trying to get in the way a little bit. You're not really serving a purpose. And, and from that standpoint on a passing down, that is uh that's a win for the offensive line but it's like man if i can just stand here and we can just push each other this is great because my <laughs> quarterback's got all the time in the world to run around and you're about to see one that is really good at running around and 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 doing all the things to extend plays so uh i don't know who that cuz the the thing is some of that falls on like i mean cuz coach fitch and and coach iu are the two guys that are in charge of either the interior or the outside line and like you, you've had NFL guys there that they've coached up and developed like crazy. That there just may be some youth here that you're, you're, you know, where it's like, okay, fellas, it's got to translate because I think you hear him say, "It's like we're not taking practice to the games," and sometimes mm-hmm. that's what you get with young guys. Like, fellas, if you do this on a Wednesday afternoon and we tell you, "Great job," you know, it's got to come on a Saturday. Don't just, you know, but. We'd heard all these things about Harvey Dyson uh, in August and how productive he was. Because I, I I said this to Coach Ayu on the coaches show a week ago. I said I joked with Coach Deruder that you were the hardest guy to earn praise from. Is that fair? He just kind of smiled. He's like, maybe, you know, <laughs> like, and, and and yet you got some praise from from Coach Ayu about Harvey Dyson in in August because of how productive he was being. He's missed a few games, and we haven't seen any of that. We just haven't seen – we haven't called his name much at all. Uh, Isaac Smith, you knew where I was at with this uh, a year ago and and all that. He's just not back to what we had last seen before the injury and all that. He's just not there. Uh, Charles Esters has broken the seal on his season. You could just go on and on. You just don't really have anybody that can win, on, win one-on-ones right now or pressure the quarterback. Consistently. Yeah, well, there, yeah, there's been some spurts, but it's up to Coach DeRuder to kind of draw something up, pick on a matchup, send extra. Um, and that's where Joey's saying we need to figure out what we're going to be because maybe we just say, screw it. Let's just not even mess with it. Let's just cover. You know, but yeah. it's just not a winning proposition, in my opinion, because you can't do that consistently either. You, you can send eight guys back every single play and if somebody you know has enough time they'll find somebody that's open and and carve you up you know they know where they're going you don't know where they're going and that usually wins if given time (laughs) yeah that's a good way to put it Uh, even for some of the best defensive backs um, sure and of course we're talking about uh, a defensive back crew that uh, has been hampered by injury and continues to be so uh, as we get this far into the season but i you know, you, you see him you see him on occasion there, I think, applying pressure, moving a quarterback around, but it's just not good enough. You're just not getting home. You're not collecting what you need to as far as either hits on the quarterback or obviously sacks. I think 
I don't know, from my vantage point, I think Amir Washington may be the most consistent guy that's There's getting the push. One. Sure. But yeah. even he is not, you know, racking up big numbers. I thought it was interesting, too, to hear Coach McGuire kind of talk about where they came from and who they've had in those spots in some recent years and, you know, breaking some bad habits that may be a result of that. And to me, that sounded like, you know, not just pointing fingers at those on the field, but from a coaching staff perspective as well, like, hey, we, we may still be doing some things like we feel like we got Tyree Wilson on the edge or something like that when we do not. And, and that goes not. Yeah. <laughs> and that goes back to, again, finding that identity. And I know when you start a season, you want to do all these things and you hope to be all these things. But as we sit here uh, opening up the month of October, well, we've got an idea of, of what you are and what you aren't. So I, th I thought it was interesting whenever you heard him talk about, you know, are we are we rushing for and, and trying to cover? Um, are we having to, to heat them up a little bit with some creative things? And I'm sure it's still going to be a combination of of all of the above, but you do have to at some point find a way to to play to your strengths uh, if there is one of those. And this QB that we've got coming down the pipe this week, I mean, with all due respect to Brendan Sorsby, who earned a ton of respect uh, in Lubbock on Saturday, probably the scariest one we've seen yet as far as the ability to maneuver. Uh, I mean, forget what he can do in a clean pocket. That's plenty scary. Uh, but his ability to maneuver when a pocket may be getting uh, closed in on him. I, I mean, I don't know that we've seen any better yet this season. Yeah, you know, I I, th I think you just saw a really good quarterback. Now, the difference between Fafita is, is that First, today's episode brought to you by Roy, and it's time to highlight the L-O-T-T, -T, Roy Player of the Week. Roy is a new platform that lets fans make contributions directly to their favorite athletes, so you can download Roy for iOS or Android and enter our referral code Locked On, and you're going to automatically be entered into a sweepstakes to win $5,000 cash. No purchase necessary, void where prohibited. This week, again, it's the Brahma Bull of the 806, Taj Brooks, who put up 172 yards against Cincinnati, passing Bam Morris for fourth all-time in career rushing yards in the process. So for that, we're kicking Taj 100 bucks on Roy. If you were as impressed as we were with his performance on Saturday night, you can show him some love too. Just hop on Roy and throw in whatever you like. Any amount gets to adding up. Real fast. Now you have the chance to show your appreciation for Taj and his standout performance this week. Just download Roy for iOS or Android and enter our code locked on, and you're going to automatically also be entered in to win a sweepstakes prize of $5,000 cash. No purchase necessary, void where prohibited. What are you waiting for? Get off the sidelines and into the NIL game with Roy. The difference between Fafita is is that, see, you know, what people don't know about this kid is that he didn't come into last season as the starter. Okay, Jed Fish was the head coach, is left for Washington, but when they they started out the season, it was somebody different, and and there was a, a change made or an injury, one of the two, and he when he you know no Fafita kind of took over, he never gave it back, and they just started rolling, and he kind of uh, Dak Prescotted Tony Romo is what what ultimately happened and he just kind of took over and it's like well we're not switching now and he ended up being i think the pac-12 freshman of the year he had like it was 73 percent completion rate last year you, you know what's crazy though he's 510 maybe slightly taller about 185 190. this is not a big kid and he's got all of about 15 rushing yards this year He's just very athletic. I think that he's extremely – he's got moxie coming out of his ears, and I think he's got a great target that he's throwing to. That's yeah. what kind of makes him scary and different because there's just not anybody – I mean, the only other guy that I can compare is, is in, in the league that you'll see. I mean, TCU's got some dudes. Iowa State's got some dudes. But, like, Travis Hunter is going to be a problem. But Travis Hunter's not the biggest kid. He's just kind of like freakish. This kid is just, you know, he's 6'5", 215, and he plays really big, and he's got chemistry with Fafita because they're high school teammates. Uh, and so, yeah, you, you need to figure out – because the, the sobering reality, uh, you're, you're – I'm just going to continue to look this up because I was curious once it got brought up a week or two ago. But your total defense – Okay, entering this coming week, 124th in the country. Your scoring defense, which is how many points you're allowing, which is, I guess, all that matters too, but you're 122nd in the country. Total offense, 
You're 15th in the country at close to 500 yards a game and scoring offense. You're 16th in the country <laughs> at about 42 points a game. So it's very drastic. Yeah. Uh, and and Tim Tim has got a lot of youth, and now you've got injury mixed in, and that's that's not been good or helpful to the situation. Uh, so. Hey, for those who are wanting to rekindle that leech magic, is it 2003 all over again? <laughs> I mean, there's a little dose of some of what we experienced yeah. during that run. Not some of the best years, but some of those other years uh, as well. I just, it's it's such a strange feeling because there have been so many times where I haven't been down on the defense this year. There, I mean, there have been some weeks where I'm like, uh, was the defense sort of the reason that you had a chance to win a game? Mm-hmm. I mean, not to just say that the offense was a no-show, but And then you've just, you know, had the doors blown off in some other cases. Thankfully, the offense was also blowing the doors off of the opposition, just like Saturday night. So you went 44 to 41. And you think about, you know, some of the points you got because of your defense on Saturday night when you win a three-point game. Those are obviously difference makers, but uh, got a long way to go. It was, you know, this conversation sort of rooted in a similar comment that I saw from one of our Matador Mob insiders I was texting with. Uh, I guess yesterday or a couple of days ago, um, I think it was Edward. Shout out to Edward out there. Nope, Rocky. I'm sorry. It was Rocky. Shout, Shout out to Edward out anyway. He's yeah. in the mix also. Uh, but Rocky was talking about, you know, is this just going to be a defense that is only good enough to play prevent, <laughs> which is kind of a general all-encompassing blanket term. But I get the gist of his question, I guess. And uh, I think that's well, usually usually all that means is it prevents you from winning. I know it's um, not that, a that's, feeling you get. Yeah, right? that's the that's the prevent. And, you know, and and you you mentioned a while ago figuring out who you are because the the, the the stats that I give you a second ago. Keep in mind scoring offense that that just is how many points are on the scoreboard. Well, I mean, defense scored you seven of those last True. weekend. Yeah, you know, and 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 you you put up a sixty six a couple of weeks ago. That that skews it. Yeah, yeah, but two short fields on picks and a pick yeah. six in that sixty-six ball game. Yeah, and 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 I think defensively, there's just a couple of whether it's yardage, yards or points. There's a couple of meltdowns that like kind of skew it. I don't think you're you're just god awful on defense, but Joey's clearly frustrated Pissed. with it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that, that's that's right. I mean I think Coach McGuire is very and and, and we've talked about this. This is his. This is his, at his core. This is who he is. Yeah, it's 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 what he envisions a football program being run that is going to play good defense. Because, and and I'll I'll echo this again. I asked him about it on a coach's show. Like, man, you you kind of spoke up about some of this. And he's like, well, Chris, let me just let me just tell you, weather is bad. Defense d- d- doesn't matter. Quarterback, you know, on your team doesn't play particularly well that day. Doesn't matter to the defense. Um, there's just some things where it can be the a constant, no, no. Uh, and and I think that. But what right now, they'll get they'll get continue to improve. Um, young kids will grow up and get more experienced. Hopefully, you get healthier as we go. But what you are right now is opportunistic, and that's what you need to be. You, you're gonna you're gonna make some plays like because Arizona's fan base, just like Cincinnati's fan base did. They look at the numbers and they go, "We're about to run through these guys." I mean, because Arizona's offense has been struggling on paper. They're, they're they're not that scary on paper at all, other than the wideout and the QB throwing to, to said wideout. Yeah, uh, but they're probably gonna look at it and go, "Oh yeah, we're about to we're about to eat." Let's pass uh, some stats. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And 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 I I think Cincinnati probably saw some of what they felt good about, like, okay, yeah, this is what, what we can move the ball and all that. But they also saw that Texas defense is pretty good too, you know, at times. Now, what, what you have to do is you have to go figure out a way to, to be pretty good on the road and to get some takeaways on the road. And it needs to travel on the road. I mean, you know, all, all the stuff that we're talking about, but because your personnel is pretty good. It's not, you don't have any, you know, draft picks or, Yet anyway, or in any all Big Twelve dudes on that side of the ball, but you're they're they're all young and or younger, and you know depending on what happens with Chapman Lewis, you could be without maybe your best safety or or certainly one of. Yeah. Um, so we'll kind of see what he's on the questionable list uh, this week. And by the way, our man Jordan Sanford not listed anywhere. Yeah, I wanted to get to this list with you because. First, 
Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel and NFL fans. You can start this season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Say you're watching a game, you get hit with a hunch, an instinctual calling. Well, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you're going to place your bets to keep up with everything going down in real time as you submit that slip. And right now, FanDuel is going to get you started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's right. $200 in bonus bets guaranteed with only a $5 bet out the gate at FanDuel.com. By the way, our man Jordan Sanford, not listed anywhere. Yeah, I wanted to get to this list with you because Lux is <laughs> back on it, uh, but McGuire expressed optimism that Braylon Lux was going to be playing on Saturday for whatever that is worth. Still a lot crossed. of time yeah, left right. to go this week, but he expressed some optimism, but Lux is still questionable. Um, Chapman Lewis is questionable. I think one of your three or four best defensive players, regardless of the age. Um, but yeah, Jordan Sanford not in the mix, and uh, he was a guy that was in a lot of pain on Saturday. He did come back to the game, but I was kind of surprised to see him not on that list, so I guess we'll just be thankful that he wasn't. Me, me and you both. Um, <laughs> I, and I guess that you know he'll – He'll be able to play with uh, whatever issue it w- was with his thumb and, you know, a wrap on it or a brace or whatever it may be. But, uh, yeah, I was uh, he's one of the first names I was looking at just because he had left for a period of time. And then if Chapman can't go, then you start looking at your free safety spot. You're like, okay, um, we, we, we've got lots of problems here. Because um, they, they talked about on Saturday, Tim DeRuder said this, <laughs> We had two true freshmen over there that hadn't practiced with us since August. And what he means by practice with us, they've been on the scout team, not like with uh, the reps of game plans and like the, the the traveling squad with the defense. I just think people get – they have a misguided sense of how many – how much time there is to practice and that you've got all the time in the world and – You've got all these guys are getting all these repetitions and all that, and that's just not reality. That's not the way it works, or nor has it ever worked. Um, and so you, you've got what? What would that be? Five or six guys at a position when typically one or two of them are getting the bulk of what you're doing for a game plan each week. Yeah. So much less the the fourth or the fifth guy. Uh, who who you had playing the red shirt, but uh, hopefully you don't have to get to that point at free safety. Hopefully Chapman's back, and uh, maybe Jordan Sanford. Obviously, it sounds like he's back, and Man. away we go. That'd be a big boost if Lewis could be back uh, on yeah. the field. Uh, Esther's remained on the questionable list. We did see him, as you already mentioned, uh, begin the year finally. Uh, just last week, we saw him in game action for the first time this season. Uh, Isaac Smith also on the questionable list, and he's got that hard to define head injury listed next to his name so i was really curious to see that listed and uh curious to see maybe what plays out there saturday not that a thigh or whatever is not also kind of leaving some gray area but man anybody sometimes dealing with the, somebody's dealing with a head issue it's hard to know what to expect week to week yeah and is that uh is that head or is that you know, is it neck? Is it concussion? Is it, you know, who the heck knows what you're talking about when you're vague with yeah. that, but I don't like any of it. No, <laughs> yeah. I know that. I don't uh, like any of it. You've already got a thin enough margin for error, uh, obviously yeah. on that side. <laughs> yes, that's right. So, um, um, I did actually, since we're on the subject of the secondary, I wanted to ask you this other question that we got from a Matador mob insider, Charles asking about Marcus Ramon Edwards. So I think we had heard mostly, um, as like a third star, is there any chance to see him factor in like emergency scenarios if we were talking safety or cornerback or anything like that? I mean, I wouldn't rule that out. I, th- I think what you're dealing with there is that, uh, which is like so many, because I mean, scout team player of the week the other week was Chetta Ophili. He's a four star defensive end. Well, you're struggling with your pass rush. What about this kid over here with all this ranking? Hey, you know, uh, we had some drops at receiver. Why is Micah Hudson doing? He had the, the fifth star, <laughs> right? And I, I, I just, I think it, in, in a lot of cases, it, it, the, there's a just a period like the 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 kid that everybody's using the example of. He's 17 years old. The kid from Bama, Ryan Williams, who is like <laughs> straight unicorn man. I mean, unbelievable. What he's doing is just 
is very unicornish. Um, it's, uh, I mean, that is just extremely rare. Um, it's unbelievable. Back on, <laughs> yeah. Back on Marcus Ramon Edwards, though, he was really raw out of high school. I don't think he was coached a ton because it's like, hey, dude, go, go tackle the ball. Or on offense, it's like, here's the ball, run with it. I mean, yeah. you know, a little more to it than that, but you get what I'm saying. Sure. And and he he's a physical looking freak. He like when he gets off the bus, you're like, this is exactly what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> just not quite. And you know, he's just a redshirt freshman, so not quite there. I think he's you know, it's like special teams. Maybe uh, star is a pretty tricky spot. Uh, maybe it's a bit too early, but th- this is what happens during the season. Like this is college football. Like he, he'll probably play as four, mm. um, if not more. And well, he, cause he's already redshirted, but you, you get what I'm saying. So yeah. I, I don't know if he's an immediate answer, okay. like a button to push just yet. Um, and as we just talked about free safety though, sometimes it's like, I'm not ready to push the button, but the light's blinking, and I got to press it anyways. <laughs> right. So, as Tim DeRuiter said, that's college football. So, <laughs> right. you know, you don't ever say never, but like in a perfect world, it's like you, you you're a developmental program, and these are young, very talented, freakish athletes that you're trying to develop and yeah. coach up and all that stuff. So. Uh, let's flip to the other side of the line of scrimmage before we get out of here, because I wanted to get to this thought from Coach McGuire, sort of talking about. Uh, what went into the offensive line shakeup? We've kind of <laughs> speculated on some of these things over the last few days. And before uh, we before we do that, can I give yeah. a shout out to the first lady? Yeah, please um, do, because this ties into running the damn ball yeah, and your investigative reporting on Button Gate. That's, that's right. Uh, you know, I saw uh, Debbie at the press conference uh, yesterday, just briefly going in. I said, "Hey." You were uh, you wearing a button on Saturday that said "Run the damn ball." She just smiled at me. She's like, "I heard uh, that my button got put on blast on your show," <laughs> and she said, "I just want you to know I've subscribed and thank you for talking about <laughs> us or whatever." And I was like, "You no problem." And I I was like, "Man, I hope because I I thought we were we were very uh, complimentary," and she was like, "Oh no, I thought it was great." You know? Oh and yeah, said, not well, put on blast at all. Oh, I was like, we love it. We Big love fans. it. And in fact, I think, uh, Cowan, you, we, we, we've uh, working on acquiring set oh, yeah. for, for us or our missuses. Yeah, uh, we have found our, it. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to waste one on her, but <laughs> on this jacket on a future episode, you're going to see one right here. Yeah. yeah procuring but, such items right now. But yeah, shout out to the first lady. Uh, <laughs> and she, she's as old school and as uh, all in as anybody in Lubbock, Texas right now. But, uh, <laughs> and I prefer... Pre- yeah, she would prefer that they run the damn ball. And I appreciate your investigative reporting and trying to get to the bottom and, and, of and, this story. And Joey was at the end of the hallway and he heard this interaction and he's like, he's like, Joey goes, and we did. And I said, yeah, you gave it to him 32 times. I was like, you that's can't right. give it to him any more than that. It's like, he's not going to walk the next day. I mean, like that's, <laughs> I mean, 32 carries in a college game is a lot. Crazy. Um, and yeah, if you go look at how many carries – Taj has compared to other leading backs in the country, he's already at like 20 to 25 more carries than some of the other guys, you know, his compadres right there at the top of the rushing deal. So, you know, that's where Cam Dickey and Jacoby Williams. Anyway, I'm, t- I'm still in the offensive line conversation, but anyway, I just want no. to point, point. No, because out. it sounds like we may be seeing more of that. I don't know if it's 32 every time out, but uh, that was, I mean, the offensive line shuffle apparently done in the name of trying to better utilize Taj Brooks. And uh, we'll take a listen to Coach McGuire talking about that. You look at Caleb Rogers, uh, and the reason that he has a chance to, at the next level is his athletic ability. And, you know, I'm talking to the Colts guy la- yesterday, and he's really intrigued by him because he's been at our practice or can see on film that Caleb's actually played all five positions. And with a roster – where you're traveling seven to eight offensive linemen. If you have a guy like that that can do that, then he's really, really valuable. Um, his body type, arm length, everything like that says he's a guard. Um, his athletic ability allows him to do that. He feels more comfortable at tackle. He's more physical at tackle. Um, and so when we were sitting there, whenever I, w- I went in and, and sit down with Kitley and, and Clay, I was like, we have an opportunity 
to try to get the best five on the field. I said, I don't know who the best five is whenever it comes to, you know, there's a battle between Dalton and, and Ty Buchanan. We're going to start cross-training Ty Buchanan also at guard and tackle. Um, again, just so we're putting experienced guys on the field, if somebody's helmet comes off like it did the other night with D.C., D.C.'s helmet come, came off, so Caleb went to – uh, guard and Ty went to tackle, but it'd be good to know that Ty could play guard. Um, and, you know, it's, it's sometimes just – I don't know what it is. Caleb is – when you watch him, he's more physical at tackle than he is, is at guard. So my mindset whenever it came to bringing Sterling is, is I want to be physical. You know, we've got a running back that is really special. So how can we get the most physical offensive line – on the field to take advantage of Taj Brooks and what he can do. And uh, so we felt like, you know, moving uh, Caleb out would bring that physicality out in everyone. And I think we can continue to build off of it. I know there are a lot of things that go into this, but uh, 172 uh, on the ground for this combo. So let's go ahead and try it again. I'm hoping they run it back Saturday in Tucson. Run the damn <laughs> ball. No. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that, that's, you, you, you just, you're starting to really like grasp what Joey's, you know, grand plan or wish list would be on kind of what it's supposed to look like. And some of it is catering to your personnel too. Uh, but, uh, you're, you're not going to get away from throwing the football. Don't misunderstand yeah. you know, any of that because that's what plays off the running back. And you are upgraded here with this group better than a previous version of it i don't know but you're in no way good enough to be like to all raise your hand and be like freight train coming through we're going right get out of the way that's not who you are yet you're you're, you're showing them different schemes uh wide zones some counter some different things with tight ends heavily involved but i think they found something and i think they're going to stick with it and you can tell that joey's kind of lit up a little bit whenever he was asked about it it's like oh yeah they did pretty good gonna going to do it again and when i started hearing that ty buchanan's going to learn uh not just he already knows both tackle spots but he's going to start learning guard too yeah you 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 may have uh stumbled upon your your best five and this is what we talked about it's exactly what he said sometimes it's find the best five we'll figure out the rest out and uh or figure the rest out excuse me but and this is kind of what they did i think they must feel Sterling Porsche, when healthy and and when well practiced, is amongst the best five they've got, and and that okay. So let's find a spot for him. Well, coach, he's never played guard. So what? That's where he that's where he goes. Um, so um, yeah, uh, that, that's that's what you're going to see going forward. It sure sounds like to me. Yeah, and uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And in that particular area of the offense, it was not broke uh, on Saturday, <laughs> as we saw the biggest. Uh, individual day for Taj Brooks so far this season. So looking forward to something similar on Saturday night and uh, of a good way historically to uh, help out a defense that may be struggling a little bit as well. Uh, some methodical running of the damn ball. All right, <laughs> shout out to uh, Mrs. Coach McGuire. Appreciate her offensive coordinating there on Saturday. Hope that continues as well. And uh, shout out to you, Chris. Appreciate the time as always, man. Enjoyed it. We'll see you for the next one. Absolutely, man. Uh, enjoyed it. Uh, enjoy your Tuesday, people out there. Thanks for being a part of this one, and we'll talk to you manana. Get subscribed on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss an episode. Thanks especially to those everydayers out there for joining us once again. And if you're an everydayer, why are you not a Matador Mob Insider? Your direct line to Chris and myself. You can check out the link in there, the link to become one in there in the show notes. Uh, try on a free 14-day trial. See how it suits you. And, of course, one of the best ways to help us grow the show is to comment anything below. So thanks to those who are doing that regularly. For Chris, I'm Casey. Thanks for the time, as always. We hope to see you back for the next round on Locked On Texas Tech. <laughs>